When it comes to the art of the automobile, he's known as the man who brought beauty back to the brands of General Motors. Ed Welburn rose to the ranks to become GM's first head of global design and the highest ranking African American in the automotive industry. After 44 years supervising the design of award winning cars, he may be retired, but he's still driven. On the roads of eastern Pennsylvania, we rode shotgun in a C7 Corvette Z06. I absolutely love this car. With Philadelphia native Ed Welburn behind the wheel. It was just so much fun designing this car. Welburn steered General Motors' signature series and others as the company's chief global designer in a career that spanned more than four decades. You know, I'm told that I worked on over 540 different car projects. What? From the Chevy Camaro to the Cadillac Escalade. What, what sparks your creativity? What is it about the car? Every car has got a different mission. They're almost like actors in a movie. How many Corvettes do you have? Just three. That's how you get out? Oh, yeah. I love this. <laughs> Two are Very prominently featured in his home any, office. You. you know, and, other toddlers are doing stick figures of horses and people and buildings. I was drawing cars. At the age of eight, his parents took him to his first auto show. And for me, that was my Disney World. And I told my parents, when I grow up, I want to design cars for that company. By 11, he wrote the president of GM, who wrote back encouraging him to go to college. By his junior year at Howard University, he landed an internship and after graduation was hired in 1972. You know, now I think about it, I've never had a job interview. And you know, what's interesting as a designer, you put your sketches up on a display board all day, every day. People see the quality of your work. As the very first African-American hired to design cars for GM, there were people that were interested, you know, what can he do, how good is he? And it didn't take long for me to realize I was representing more than myself. How tough was it to be the first? It was tough, but you know, the people I worked with were very supportive. So I like to work in a side view. Including, Welburn says, a well-meaning supervisor with some gut-punching career advice. I designed this high-speed research car that set world records and designing the pace car for Indianapolis 500 and working on Cutlass Supremes. And I told I was doing great work, but he said, you know, the company will never make a black person an executive. So you need to make a big decision. You either are going to stay at the level that you're at, or you should take a look at working somewhere else. And it took me a while to clear my head. So then I decided, you know, I'm staying. I'm staying. I believe in what I'm doing. That decision paid off in 2005. He became GM's first global design chief. But he would face new challenges. The Great Recession, GM's bankruptcy, and low morale. His solution? Greenlighting Corvette's next generation. Why? Because that's going to generate enthusiasm within the team. And the team just dug down deep. And I think they did some of their absolute best work during that period. Among his 1,800 employees. All right, come on in. Was designer Rich Shear. We caught up with him at an auto show in Detroit. One of the great things about Ed was he always felt like one of the studio guys. He just had confidence and patience and again, kind of relaxed in, in kind of those moments of maybe a little bit of turmoil. Among the reasons, Mikhail Haggerty asked him to judge this concourse to elegance. You know, we like to think of him as retired. He's still very much involved in the car space, and he's this tastemaker. His design interest expands way beyond cars. That's an understatement. Before his 2016 retirement, Welburn also led the team on the Chaparral Vision GT. Okay, here we, go. here we go. A concept car designed for the Gran Turismo 6 video game. Oh, hell no. His work on Bumblebee landed him a cameo in Transformers 
age of extinction. My office in 15 minutes. Did we mention his influence on the beast? The official presidential limo? There was so much security around that project. For years, they just took a sedan, generally a Cadillac, stretched it, and put all this armor plating and stuff on it, and the interiors were really tight. With the Beast, we decided to hold the interior space like a conventional car, and then go out. So it is, it's a beast, Bigger. it's huge. <laughs> So yeah. this is the Hall of Honor. Welburn Standing with the industry's elite is on display at the Automotive Hall of Fame. I just, I just look at these faces and these names like the Pattersons. I mean, just incredible. As a member of its board, he's giving voice to the pioneers that came before him. Names like Charlie Wiggins. He won, I think, like 50% of all the races over a 10-year period. He designed his own cars, built them from junk parts. Barred from the Indy 500, Wiggins secretly worked on the engine of the 1934 winner Bill Cummings. Welburn helped enshrine Wiggins' place in racing history. He's there along with Mario Andretti and Henry Ford and, and me. <laughs> Oh, yes. Welburn yes, is back you, at the drawing the board these days, yoga. designing, of all things, shoes. And I think it's that automotive inspiration oh, or foundation is that has really gotten me to do such sleek designs. For Welburn, it's all about shifting gears, expanding his lane, and taking people along for the ride. Uh, it, this car's been the Colin Powell's house. We spent an afternoon together. What? He, he's, he was a Corvette guy. And uh, been to Mario and Dredd. In fact, Mario lives pretty close to where we are right really? now. It's been to Mario's house. It's been a lot of places. Let's go and, let's go and say hi to Mario. <laughs> yeah, let's go knock on his door. <laughs> That's the next story. Yeah. So much to say about Ed, Ed Welburn. First of all, Charlie Wiggins, mm -hmm. he's, he's in production trying to make a movie out of his life story. Cool. Those shoes, he won't tell us about what deal he has mm -hmm. coming okay. forth. And you know, really, I want to shout out the 70th anniversary of the Corvette. It's this year. Nice. Ed was responsible for three generations of that car. Loves that car, it's his favorite. And a special shout out to Sierra Morris and Larry Goldfein for helping me put this piece together. It just such an incredible life. And then the note that you can do it mm -hmm. if you put your mind to it, self-manifestation, this man's all about it. If you do it, you can have two Corvettes in your office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <So> <laughs> That's the dream. Isn't that unusual? Drive the Corvettes right into your house. Isn't that so unusual? It's amazing. It's good. Yes. I love like my joy ride there. My yeah. son was playing Gran Turismo last night, so we'll have to get we'll have to try to get behind the wheel of the voice <laughs> of the the Chaparral Vision GT. Yes, Is that right? Indeed. Okay, fun. There it is. It looks chic. Right. His yeah. avatar's on it too. There you go.